Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. You know, yesterday I shared with you that Jesus promised he would come back to this earth. And I believe that Jesus keeps his word. He's always kept his word to me. And so therefore I trust him. If he says he's coming back to get his people, I believe that he is coming back. And yesterday I shared with you five things that we should be doing while we await his return. And I shared with you that we are to be watchful because Jesus promised that he's coming. He's told us, keep watching and praying so that we enter not into temptation. And we are to be peaceful while we are watching. You know, we are to be found uh, in peace when Jesus comes. Romans 14, 17 tells us, for the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Also, we are to be prayerful. It says, but keep on the alert at all times, praying in order that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. What a wonderful day that's going to be when we get to stand before Jesus Christ. So we need to be watchful. We need to be in peace. We need to be prayerful and we need to be forgiving. Jesus told us to be forgiving. He said, if you stand praying and you have odd against any, forgive as your father in heaven also forgives you. We are to be ready at all times to share the gospel, the good news of the gospel to others. And also we are to be sober, to be, which means to just be serious minded and to take a realistic approach to uh, this life and to prepare for the next one. And we are uh, to be ready. It says, be on the alert again in Matthew twenty five thirteen, For you do not know the day nor the hour that Jesus is coming back. So those are five things that we need to be doing while we await for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Now, I believe that there's things that we should not be doing. And the Bible lays this out as well. It says, do not be fearful. Fear, beloved, is not of God. And if you have repented of your sins and forsaken them, and if you know him and are pursuing him, you have nothing to fear except fear itself. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. Now, as we see all these things coming upon the earth, whether economical failures, persecution, or great trials, know that our that our final resting place as a Christian is not this world as we know it. There is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Luke twenty one twenty eight says, But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is why I think earthquakes and floods are happening in, in all over the world. This is a groaning. Even the earth is groaning for its redemption. So the first thing not to be doing while we wait for Jesus is don't be fearful. Secondly, do not be deceived. Don't be deceived by sin and by what you see. Scripture tells us to test everything by the word of God. In Matthew 24, it says, Then if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now there will be no doubt, beloved, as to the second coming. Only Christ will descend as he ascended from above, and every eye, the Bible says, shall behold him and see him as he is. So don't be deceived and don't be led away by sin and even by what you see. Always test it with the word of God. 
Thirdly, don't be troubled about these times and even about the second coming of the Lord. I know that that there are Christians, some Christians that are, that are fearful even of the second coming. But, you know, if you know him as your personal Lord and Savior, you have nothing to fear. You'll be able to just rejoice when you see your wonderful king and shepherd. John 14, 1 through 3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, Jesus is saying. In my father, Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What a wonderful promise. We came from God, beloved, for God, and we are going back to God. So do not be troubled about what you see and even about how things are going to all work out at his coming. Fourthly, be sure and not be spiritually asleep. Matthew thirteen thirty five and 36 says, Therefore, be on the alert, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening, at midnight, at cock crowing, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. So then let us not asleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. Always go to bed and asleep physically, dressed spiritually, ready to go. My husband and I always pray together at night. We always ask for forgiveness of anything that we might have done or said that day. We ask for protection and, and guidance and, and uh, throughout the night and also a readiness should he come while we are physically asleep. Lastly, do not be weighed down with the cares of this life. You know, there, there are so many things. There's an anxious care in the words, even casting all your care upon him. It says, this means there is an affectionate care in, in his words. He cares for you over and above all our anxious cares. In our Lord is never ending affect, affectionate care. Jesus says, be on guard that your hearts may not be weighted down with uh, dissipation, which is worldliness and drunkenness and the worries of life. And that that day come on you suddenly like a trap, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Doing the right thing always keeps us from being anxious and fretful and fearful. Do your best. Be a woman and a man of integrity and the best will find you. When you are in doubt as to what you are doing or where you are, ask the Lord, should I be here? Should I be doing this at this time? If you know you shouldn't, flee. Our conscience is a God-given element. The spirit of man, our inner voice, is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. So whatever you do, be ready. Happy is the people whose strength is in you, O God, and whose heart is set on pilgrimage. We are going somewhere, and when Jesus comes to get us, we're going with him. God bless you today as you live by faith. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636.